friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead, and I'm going on a little rant. Um, it's not my typical, but it is kind of typical for me. I want to talk about truth and honesty and manipulation. Because 50 years ago, when I, you know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, when I was a little girl, commercials were at least honest about what they wanted from you. They wanted to sell you something. Nowadays, they're giving a whole other message. Okay? Let's, let's talk about my video, how, how Hal lays uh, floating flooring. Now, I made a crack when, I w when he was laying the flooring because it was Sunday. He let me sleep in. Okay? So, I got up at around 10, and he had had a bowl of cereal, and he went straight to work. Bless you, dear. And after I got up, and I've had my cup of tea, you know, and he showed me what he was doing, I said, okay, I'll make you some breakfast. And then I made the joke about, see, other people make bacon when they want their husbands to build them a closet. I use homestead bacon, and he builds me entire additions. Well, I want to apologize for that. Because the more I think about that bacon commercial, okay, the bacon commercial where the woman goes, my closet isn't big enough. How do I get my husband to build me a bigger closet? And she serves him bacon. And voila, he builds her a closet. And then there's the other guy who's like, okay, I have a shelving unit, but I can't put it together. And he bakes makes bacon for his roommate and his roommate builds the shelving unit for him. What? Why don't I like the, those commercials, folks? Because it's not about doing something for somebody because you care or because you like them or just because you want to do something nice. They're telling you that doing things nice for people is a way of manipulating them into getting something that you want. That has come a long way from a commercial going, look, honey, it's shake and bake, to I'll give him bacon and he'll build me a closet. Not I'll give him bacon because I love him, or I'll give him bacon because I'm his wife and I love to do those things for my husband. Give him bacon and he'll do something for me. That is just damn near prostitution, if you ask me. So, I also got thinking about, you know, and it's a lot of this is centered around commercials, but I also got thinking about the relationships, our relationships with our family doctors. We call them family doctors, but we really don't have that famil familial connection with our doctors as they did we did when I was a kid 40 years ago. 45 years ago, uh, we got the chicken pox or the measles or something. And my brother got it worse than I did. But the doctor came to the house. My brother, my other brother got really, really sick. Couldn't hold down any food or water or anything. The doctor came to the house. Imagine that. Now... Uh, or, you know, let's go up 20 years, and it took me two years to convince my family doctor when my eldest son was little, so we're talking 25 years ago, took me two years to convince him that I don't always get an elevated temperature when I get what's known as a fever. And I had to prove it to him. But he listened to me. And when I proved it to him, because I got strep throat without a, fe without a temperature, he understood so let's move up another 25 years. And doctors now, and I'm not saying doctors don't do their job because I know they're constantly overwhelmed. They're really overwhelmed. But doctors today, now this is, this is something I, I had forgotten about. About 20 years ago, I'm sitting in my family doctor's in uh, Ontario, and I'm waiting and a salesperson, and they're obviously a salesperson. They got the nice coat and the nice boots and the, the sample case and the, and the briefcase. And uh, 
she went to the receptionist while I was in the waiting room and told the doctor that she was here for a such and such company. And I looked at her and I and I said, are you are you giving like are you here about such and such a drug? And she said, yeah, how did you hear about that? And I said, TV. But what was going on or what go, would go on was that they would bring in free samples of different medications that are supposed to look work on different things and then if someone came in the doctor could give them a free sample to try on a specific ailment and if it worked the doctor may start ordering that specific drug from that specific company now let's go back up here another 20 let's go to present day times and when I was a child you know, you would give your symptoms, whether it be over the phone or whatever, to the doctor. And the doctor would come and, and do an examination and say, okay, this isn't the measles, this is the chicken pox, or he's got food poisoning, or this is the stomach flu, or whatever. And then he would either write a prescription or, or give us a treatment or tell us how to treat the ailment. Nowadays, you go into the doctor and you say, I don't know what's wrong with me or this is what's going on. And the doctor immediately turns to a computer and looks up your symptoms. And then looks up the prescribed drug. And then she just prescribes it. Or they just prescribe it. So the familial link to the family doctor really isn't there anymore. Doctors don't either don't have the time or can't make the time to get down to a one-on-one -on -one basis of knowing their patients. Which brings me to why they advertise prescription drugs on the TV. So this takes it to another level. Okay? So that this is make, supposedly making everybody's life easier. Because they give the doctors the free samples. And then on TV, they blitz everybody saying, if you've got this, try this. And then you go to your doctor and say, this is, this is what I think I have. You know, could you try this? Could I try this drug? And you're actually doing the work for the doctor. Except for the one small insignificant detail we are not doctors yes we know our bodies more than everybody else but we are also susceptible to commercials as much as the doctors are susceptible to free samples there's also the fact that half of these commercials on TV the first blitz of the commercial they tell you if you have this problem ask your doctor about this drug and it takes about 10 to 15 seconds to say that and the other three quarters of the commercial is a list of potential side effects well they they do it really quietly really in a really soothing voice they tell you all these potential side effects while they show grandparents romping with their grandchildren on a sunny lawn or sailing or or whatever the case may be so that you're actually distracted by the music the soft voice and the picture into not paying attention to the potential side effects of those drugs. So, to me, that's proof positive that pharmaceutical companies have taken over the health industry. I don't even know if we should call it a health industry anymore. My point is, is we are being lied to and manipulated all the time and we're even being taught how to manipulate what kind of message are they sending when they're trying to get you to buy something you don't need trying to uh, get you to ignore danger so they can make a buck even even our governments yes our governments will tell us the truth but when I ask, when will marijuana be legal, for example, I don't need a 10-page dissertation that doesn't give me a clear answer. Those 10-page dissertations or, or 
60 word answers that could have been a four word answer like you know next june or some bloody thing because they're counting on people getting overwhelmed by the amount of words okay if they can't get us to swallow a lie they'll baffle us with bullshit now I don't know why we the people who live in these countries have to be the ones who not just for us to be honest but that we have to demand honesty and truth from those we're supposed to trust. This is the Mrs. Volfi from our half acre homestead saying, when did honesty and truth become an option instead of a necessity? Take care, God bless.